The new Minnesota Student Survey is out and it reveals that more students than ever before are stressed, anxious and depressed, especially 11th grade girls. A local health expert, Mary Gusenberg, has some advice for our parents. First off, thanks Jody. How good to be with you and your viewers. Um, I think there is no surprise for anyone raising a kiddo today to say that our kids are more stressed and just the heaviness of what's happening and has happened in the world is showing up obviously our, in our kiddos. I love the Minnesota Student Survey. I think it gives us great insight to what is happening every day in a kiddo's life. And it's one of the many tools to be used when supporting kiddos. It's used by mental health practitioners, coaches. It's used by um, school staff. Just where do we take our, our focus? Where do we take the best uh, wraparound care for our kiddos? And it's a helpful, helpful tool. You know, and in particular, they were saying that um, girls in the 11th grade seem to suffering the most or have challenges with mental health. Yeah. Any reason why that particular age group? You know, um, I would say it, it varies from year to year, What how the survey comes back. Some years it's earlier. Um, I think, let's pause and think of where was a, an 11th grader? Well, two years ago, they would have started high school, but their high school experience started probably from their bedrooms or their, so, and now we're slowly coming back into this, everybody back in person. And we look at the other research of kiddos and academics and how, how are those kiddos keeping up? And there's additional pressures. Again, all I can say is the Minnesota Student Survey, awesome tool, excellent tool that helps now me as a practitioner that's gonna come in or all of us, how do we provide the best care for these kiddos and help build skills that's going to help them move forward. What would be some of those advice or tips that you would give to parents and students as well? Yeah, you know what I think is so helpful is walking through what is resiliency. And resiliency is, me, all of us, right? We all have challenges in our everyday life. And it's how am I able to bounce back? And some kiddos, it seems like they can bounce back really easy. Maybe they have a different toolkit, right? Maybe they've walked through different things. But the one thing to remember about being resilient is that everybody's at a different level. There is no perfect um, plan when it comes to um, being a resilient person. Um, and then also reminding parents and caregivers and all of us that you might have more resiliency in one part of your life than you do in others. So for a kiddo, I might be able to bounce back a lot faster at home, but with my school challenges, I might need a little more support. Um, it's just having that toolkit. Oh, I think it's super important to have a plan too. When it comes to that resiliency is having a plan. And I wouldn't advise that you would walk through this when tempests are hot and everybody is like, well, we just need to figure out a plan to get through this. Having a plan means approaching when we're all even keel and we can walk through this. What would be some of those tips that you would give? Yeah, thank that you. That's, yeah, I, mean, I have four tips plan? that I think would really help in that. And once it starts with connections. It starts with research shows all kiddos need five caring adults to be healthy, caring adults themselves as they mature. So part of that plan would be parents who are in your circle of five caring adults, could be coaches, could be teachers, could be if you're in a faith community, faith leaders, neighbors. And I like to advise parents that that's your homework is that's your job at all ages. It's never too early and it's never too late to start putting those five caring adults in place. Along with the, in their, their care circle is who are in their, their friendship circles. Like who are their positive friendships? This goes for us too, right? Hang out with people that build you up, not pull you down. And 
we all crave that. I, my, my own two children have heard me say that more once, more than once as are they building you up or pulling you down? And we do need that because the more we have those caring relationships that creates that positivity in me as the, the receiver and the giver um, for a healthier, happier, more satisfied life. And the last thing around connections is having a sense of belonging. And when we have a sense of belonging to a greater purpose, really that helps shape the attitudes for everyone, right? When And, and I would invite families to just be like, hmm, what are we doing that is part of something bigger than our family? Maybe a family is passionate about charity work. They're passionate about fill in the blank. And that gives that kiddo then an opportunity to go, wow, the world is bigger than just my little circle here. So connections is number one. Oh, yes. And so number two, thank you. Um, I have four total, I think that are really helpful. For, so number two is, is being present. It's that mindfulness, practicing mindfulness. Because when we pause, and we pause and show up for ourselves. You know the old saying, right? Put on your own oxygen mask first. And when we do that, then we as caregivers are modeling. But I think our kids can model for their peers as well. The importance of being attentive to myself so that I can show up with my whole person. I use an acronym here that's really helpful, I think, when it comes to being present. And it's the acronym is RAIN, like falling from the sky. Um, and the first letter is when I feel an emotion coming up is you're going to R is recognize hmm. something is brewing. And just then I want to analyze that's the A. What am I feeling? And it might be I'm feeling tired. I'm feeling hungry. I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling hurt. And then inquire. So recognize, analyze, inquire. Why am I feeling this way? Why am I feeling hurt? And then the N is nurture so that I have that opportunity to go, okay, I feel this way. Thank you for showing up for me, but you know what? I got this. And then I can walk through it with love instead of fear. So two is mindfulness. We have connection. We have mindfulness. Three is routines. And some people might go, why do you need routines when you're talking about building resiliency? But I think it's the greatest place to start because our kids crave routines especially a younger person, they need to know what's coming next. Having a plan that helps transition, having a plan that transitions from after school to the home time, having a plan to getting ready in the morning. Those routines are so helpful to build resiliency. And the last part of routines is self-care. And I think as a family approaches this together, having the, just noting the importance of self-care, huge. And, and it might mean as, as parents, we need to literally put this on our calendar and block time. Because again, the importance of caring for myself means now I can show up for my loved ones. Think of how important that would be for all kiddos to have the, uh, know that, hey, I, it's okay for me to take a time out. I need to rejuvenate for myself. And that teaching those coping skills, reading a book, going for a walk, play, baking, cooking, whatever their mindfulness is, is slowing down and practicing that in a daily routine. And then number four is goals and having attainable and reachable goals that really help walk through when things get bumpy. So maybe a goal for a kiddo is, I want to do better in music this year. Well, how can you do better in music? It might come down to daily nuggets of practice. I'm just going to daily practice. And setting those attainable, achievable, small goals that reach a larger. So my four tips. Um, connections. People who build you up, not tear you down. Um being mindful, attentive to your own needs so that you can show up for others, having routines and goals. And last, just, just taking time to pause. I use this, another acronym, sorry, I use a lot of acronyms. <laughs> another acronym is just pause. And that the, the pause is be present, be attentive, 
understand. And I use that for listen to understand, not to respond. S is support. And we do have to make the circle bigger. Sometimes we caregivers, we need support too. And we need to see if we can get support for our kiddo. And then E is exploring those solutions together. I think it fits so well with those four connection, mindfulness, goals, and routines.